To solve two-step equations, we undo the order of operations. You're going to see in the next slide how we're going to build an equation that we could solve by using the order of operations. Remember, the last two steps of the order of operations are multiplication and or division from left to right. And the second step is, or the last step is, addition and or subtraction from left to right as it appears in the expression. How to solve two-step equations by undoing that order of operations is that we do that order of operations in reverse and we undo it using the properties of equality that you should have learned about prior to this lesson. The first step is to undo any addition or subtraction and the second step is to undo any multiplication or division that appears in the equation. We're going to see in the next slide we're going to use the order of operations to build an equation that we can solve. Example 2. We're solving more two-step equations here. Part A of example 2 is 15.61 is equal to negative 4 point or negative 7.43 plus 0.2x in this case, we want to think of the equal sign as the middle, and sometimes uh, I do this. I haven't done this in any of my videos yet. I'm surprised I haven't. It's a trick I use to teach students the difference between the left and the right of an equation. A dashed line down the middle kind of helps to differentiate between the left and the right. So on the left, we have a constant term, 15.61. On the right, we have negative 7.43 plus 0.2x. As you saw in the previous examples, we undid addition or subtraction, then we undid multiplication or division. And that confuses students when you have an example like this, where the operation between the variable term and the constant term is addition. But in fact, we use addition to start this problem off because we have a negative 7.43 here. We could, if we wanted to, rewrite this as a positive 0.2x minus 7.43, where in fact then we would be undoing addition. But uh, we could simply just understand that we would add 7.43 to both sides. Thus, on the left hand side, the 7.43 and the negative 7.3, they cancel, they become zero leaving us the variable term, 0.2x. On the right-hand side, we add these two together to get 23.04. Next, we undo the multiplication. In this case, it's multiplied the variable by 0.2x. So we're going to divide each side by 0.2. So two, zero, not a six there. On the left-hand side, we divide 23.04 by 0 0.2, a couple ways to do that. In the denominator, I recognize that I have two tenths, so if I multiply that number by 10, or move the decimal one time to the right, and then take this decimal and also multiply it by 10, put it between the 0 and the 4, then I simply have to divide by 2. 2 divides into 2 one time. 2 divides into 3 one time, and when I would subtract then, that would give me a remainder of one. Two goes into ten, five times with no remainder. Here's where my decimal would go. And then two goes into four, two times with nothing left over. Put my equal sign down because that's the middle of my equation. On the right hand side, the point twos divide out, leaving me one x. Now I typically rewrite my solution with the x first. We could have done that from the beginning, so x is equal to 115.2. So we can see in this example, not so much do we always key in on the operation between the variable term and the constant term, whereas we key in on the sign of the constant term itself. In example b, if we'd like to uh, use this dashed orange line to indicate the middle or the equal sign. On the left we have 2.1x minus 1.103 equal to, and then on the right hand side we have 4. 
So in this case, the variable is on the correct side, or the left side, the easy side, I think, for some students. Here we have to undo the uh, subtract 1.103, or the negative 1.103, by adding that to each side. So adding 1.103 to each side. On the right-hand side, don't make the mistake. Remember, the decimal in 4 is to the right of it, so it would be 4, and then the 1 in the 1's place would be under it. So we add those together, that gives us 5.103. We don't necessarily have to put the zeros here. If we were subtracting, we would. So on the right-hand side, that leaves me 5.103. On the left-hand side, that leaves me 2.1x. Put my equal sign down. Next, I'll divide each side by 2.1. I divide because it's on this side. It is 2.1 times x. And finally, on the left-hand side, the 2.1s divide out, leaving us with x being equal to, and then on the left hand side, uh, we can do some division in this case. This one isn't so straightforward. 2.1 divides into 5.103. We have to make that a whole number by multiplying it by 10. This becomes 51.03. Thus, we multiply that by 10, then we divide. 21 goes into 51, well that's twice, and 2 times 21 is 42. And when I subtract there I get 9, bring down a 0. 21 goes into 90 4 times. 4 times 21 is 84. When I subtract that leaves 6, bring down the 3. 21 goes into 63 3 times, and 3 times 21 is 63. So our final solution here is 2.43. Of course, you could have used a calculator there, but it's always good to be able to do things like that by hand. In example C, we have 2 is equal to x divided by 0 0.5 plus 7. Um, Example A and example C here are similar in the fact that the variable started on the right-hand side. In this case, uh, example A, I dealt with that at the end. I put the variable on the left at the end. In example C, you're going to see me rewrite the problem. And what's going to happen is I'm going to switch sides here. I'm going to take what this 2, and I'm going to write it on the right of the equal sign. This is because of the symmetric property. And then on this side, I'm going to write x divided by 0 0.5 plus 7. And now I'm going to solve this equation. x plus 0 0.5, x divided by 0 0.5 plus 7 is equal to 2. I first have to undo the addition. It's the addition of a positive 7. So I will subtract 7 from both sides. The plus 7 and the minus 7 are opposites. They cancel. You can meet x divided by 0 0.5 is equal to negative 5. To take away 7 is a negative 5. We would subtract their absolute value. 7 take away 2 is 5. And since the absolute value of negative 7 is greater than the absolute value of 2, the solution is as a negative sign. Next, I multiply both sides by 0 0.5, or 0 0.5, either way. x then is equal to a negative times a positive is negative. 5 times 5 is 25, and since we have one decimal place in this 0.5, my answer needs to have one decimal place in it, negative 2.5. So then we're solving some two-step equations that involve decimals.
example two, your turn. Remember, we're solving two-step equations here. The thing you should do at this point is pause the video and time yourself. I say give yourself anywhere from six to 10 minutes. You should be able to complete these problems in that amount of time. When you're done, continue the video to get the solutions with the work. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully your work is good and true and your answers match mine. Problem A, we have 3.2 times x minus 2.08 equal to 20. Remember, we have to isolate the variable x. To do that, we're first going to undo the subtract 2.08. We undo that by adding 2.08. And remember, we have to do that to both sides because of the addition property of equality. On the left, these two numbers cancel out because they are what we call opposites, leaving 3.2x. Bring down my equal sign. Remember, that's the middle of the equation. When I add 20 and 2.08, remember the 2 has to go in the 1's place. It's 22.08. Next, I'll undo the multiplication of 3.2 and x by dividing each side by 3.2. On the left-hand side, 3.2x divided by 3.2. The 3.2s divide out and give 1x or x. The variable is now isolated down my equal sign. Then I have to divide 22.08 by 3.2. And the way we could do this by hand would be 3.2 on the outside, 22.8 on the inside. We're not allowed to divide by a decimal number, so we move that decimal to the right one time, or we multiply it by 10. Again, we multiply this number by 10 by moving the decimal place one time to the right. Then we divide. 32 goes into 220 six times. Six times 2 is 12. Carry the 1. Six times 3 is 18, plus the 1 I carried is 19. 192. Subtract. Borrow from the 2. 0 becomes 10. 10 take away 2 is 8. I have to borrow from the 2 so that that 1 becomes 11. 11 take away 2 is, or 11 take away 9 is 2. Bring down the 8. 32 goes into 288. In fact, it goes 9 times. 9 times 2 is 8. Actually, it's 18. Carry a 1. 9 times 3 is 27. Plus 1 is 28. We subtract, we get no remainder, so the solution here is 6.9. Of course, you could have done this division with a calculator. Problem B, negative 4 times x minus 2.6 is equal to negative 13. So what we have to do here is first, on the left-hand side, undo the subtract 2.6. We do that by adding 2.6 to each side. Remember, we add 2.6 to each side because of the addition property of equality. On the left-hand side, the 2.6s, they're opposites because one's positive and one's negative. That leaves us negative 4x. These cancel. On this side, we have negative 13 plus 2.6. We actually have to subtract these absolute values. The answer is going to be negative. And when we subtract these two numbers, we have to put a decimal place here, so we borrow from the 3, it becomes 2. 10, take away 6, is 4. Bringing down my decimal place, 2 take away 2 is 0, and 1 take away nothing is 1, so we end up with negative 10.4. The second step here is to divide each side by negative 4. We divide because it's multiplied by 4. I should say it's multiplied by negative 4. 
the negative fours on the left divide out. They become one, isolating the variable x. Bring down my equal sign, negative 10.4 divided by negative four. Well, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 10 divided by four is two. In fact, this is where the decimal place would be. When I divide four into 10, it leaves two left over, then four has to go into 24, and that would be six times. So the final answer here is x is equal to 2.6. Finally, in example B, we have the equation 7.2 is equal to x divided by 4 plus 7.5. The variable is on the right-hand side this time, so we'll be undoing what's on the right-hand side. First, we have to do the undo the plus 7.5. We do that by subtracting 7.5 from both sides. On this side, the right-hand side this time, the 7.5 and the minus 7.5 combine to give 0. As I've been saying, they cancel, which leaves us x divided by 4 is equal to, on this side we do the math, 7.2 take away 7.5 is going to be a negative 0 0.3. You can do that with a calculator, or if you were having to do it mentally, um, you would subtract, subtract these two, 7.5, take away 7.2 is 0 0.3, and the absolute value of negative 7.5 is greater than the absolute value of 7.2, therefore that answer needs to be negative. Um, on continuing to solve for x, we need to multiply both sides by 4. Now, this is different from the other two problems because it's a divide by the constant number, not multiply. So the opposite of division is multiplication. Notice I use two different ways to multiply by 4. On this side, I just use dot 4. They will divide out, leaving us the x on the right-hand side being equal to, I have to multiply 4, times negative 0 0.3. 4 times 3 is one point, or is 12, and since point 0.3 has one decimal place, I start at the right of 12, and I move to the left one time. So the answer is 1.2, and it's negative because a negative times a positive is always negative. Finally, I always like to write it with my x on the left-hand side, and that's using the symmetric property of equality. So these were two-step equations with decimals. As we move on, we're going to look at examples with fractions.